Good morning, good morning, good morning, class. I'm your instructor today, Miss Williams. And we will go over roll call and then go immediately into our lesson plan. Okay? Jessica McElrath, you are present. Tawana Hart, you are present. And Aaron Henry, thank you all for coming to class today. Your quote for today is, nothing is impossible. For the word itself says, I'm possible. Okay? Your subject for today is hair additions, better known as hair extensions. Your lesson objective is students will be able to describe different methods to use for hair additions, learn the steps for hair addition service, and the blood spill procedure. Today we will discuss the blood spill procedure, the importance of the client consultation, hair scalp analysis. We will discuss the different methods of hair additions, discuss the different tools that you'll use for hair additions, and the decontamination and infection control, okay? So the three levels of decontamination that we will use with a hair extension service is washing and drying our hands, which is cleaning, using hand, sanitar hand sanitizer, and barbicide, okay? So, Aaron, can you tell me why we would use hand sanitizer? You're correct. We would use hand sanitizer if we drop our comb on the floor or if we throw the trash away, okay? Disinfecting, which is better known as decontamination, will also be barbicide. To mix the ratio of barbicide is two ounces of barbicide to 32 ounces of water. So you always wanna wash your hands before your client, okay? And in between clients, if you have time, you will also wanna use hand sanitizer if you was to drop your comb on the floor, throw trash away, or say, hey, I dropped my needle or I put my needle down and want to pick it back up, okay? Doing a braid and sew-in, that's one of the methods. So you will always want to keep in mind your disinfecting procedures so you can be safe while servicing your client, okay? So, Jessica, can you tell me how do we mix barbicide? You're correct, two ounces of barbicide to 32 ounces of water. All right, so the purpose of hair additions is to add length, volume, and change color. Sometimes you, your client will come in and they will wanna say, hey, I want my hair to be fuller because my hair is thin. Or I want to add length to see how my hair would be long because that's the goal. Or, hey, I don't want to just dye my hair blonde yet, but can we add a couple of pieces of tracks? Change the color a little bit so I can see what it'll look like before I actually have a chemical service, okay? So, could you tell me, Aaron, the reason why we would add volume to a client's hair with hair additions? You are correct, to make it fuller. Absolutely, Jessica, can you tell me why we would add length? You're correct, we would add length because the client wants to know how their hair would look longer, okay? So, Aaron, can you tell me why we would change the color? You're correct, because sometimes we want to see what it looks like with highlights, but not receive an actual chemical service. You are absolutely correct. So, during the con consultation <clears throat> and the hair analysis, you'll do them both together. The reason why the client consultation card is important is because they have their first and last name foremost, but also any known allergies that they may have, okay? <clears throat> you'll also know during the client consultation card, you'll also know if they have received the service before and what services they have received, but also if they called in to schedule an appointment, they will also have their future appointment as well. So, <clears throat> when your client comes in, if they're new or pre-existing, you want to make sure that their name and last name is spelled right, is correct with their address, any no allergies. But also, you want to make sure that the service that they're getting, hey, the service that you booked today is a hair extension service, which in the salon, they would use hair extension, but to us, it's hair additions, okay? So, you would ask them, what hair extension service are you wanting? And... What do you want your final look to be? How long do you want this to last? So, for example, they'll say, hey, 
I want something that is going to make it fuller. I want it to last at least three to four weeks. I want it to be manageable, um, financially, uh, you know, affordable. And um, I want something that is low maintenance, but a natural look. So, doing the consultation, you will want to turn your client around to the mirror, okay? You want to sanitize your hands, right? So after you sanitize your hands, you want to properly drape them with a towel and a cape. Those are two tools that you will also be using as well. So Jessica, can you tell me why the client consultation is important for this service? You're absolutely correct. To know of any known allergies, to see past services that they have received at the salon, to know their first and last name. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, doing the consultation after you have draped them with a towel and a cape, you want to go through their hair and do your hair analysis. What you are looking for are any scalp abrasions, okay, or any damaged hair. Reason being, if there are any open sores or any scalps, scalp abrasions like tears, open sores, like I stated, um, bumps, maybe their hair is not free from dirt and debris, this is the time where you would suggest, hey, we need to shampoo and condition you. Did you shampoo and condition before? They might say yes, or um, I didn't have time. So that's when you suggest, let's have a shampoo and condition to add to your service. Or you might ask them, do you get dandruff a lot? That determines what method you use, okay? So typically in the salon, the two most popular methods that we use is the braid down and the sew in and the adhesive method where you use a hair glue, okay? But then you have linking and tube shrinking. Linking is micro links, which is a little metal piece. Um, sometimes it's plastic, and you use a tool that looks like a pair of pliers to add the extension hair onto the real hair and clamp it together, okay? And tube shrinking is a little round tube, okay? It's a plastic tube that you pull the natural hair through and the extension and you use a hot tool to melt the hair glue to the hair okay those are pretty expensive so they're not really a popular thing some people do use them a lot because it works better on their hair but the two popular methods to use is the braid in and the simple binding which is the hair glue method where you put it on the track and you put it into the part of the hair okay so Jessica can you tell me how to perform a hair and scalp analysis you are correct you want to part the hair section it with your fingers to look at the scalp and to look at the hair so Aaron can you tell me why is it important to do it yes you are correct to look for scalp abrasions or breaking in the hair okay the reason why we are doing this is because we want to make sure that the scalp is in a healthy state okay a clean state and also that the hair is not damaged you do not want to do a hair addition service on hair that is fairly fine okay hair that is fairly fine and that is see-through that is not a good candidate for a hair extension service okay so you can see the effects here where her hair starts at her shoulders and she wants length to her hair, okay, and add a little bit more curl. So you can see the after effect is where her hair is approximately maybe six and a half inches lower than her shoulder bone, okay? So some of the tools that you will use doing a hair extension service would be a cape, all right? We talked about that, that's how you drape. A cape, you would use that for draping duckbill clips. After they have been shampooed and conditioned and blow dried, you will section their hair off. So wherever they want to add the hair addition you would use duckbill clips to hold the hair in place okay you also would use barbicide to disinfect all right your duckbill clips after they have been used all-purpose comb you use that for parting also um you can use that for spacing because when you add hair additions it needs to be at least one inch away from the perimeter and one inch above the perimeter from the from the ear and from the edge of their hairline, okay? And you also 
you want to measure at least one inch above the hair extension being added into the hair to make sure that it's properly covered at all times, okay? You want it to look as natural as possible. You will also use barbicide to disinfect an all-purpose comb. Scissors, you would use that if you were, you know, wanting to cut the track to put it inside, to put it in the hair, or to um, cut the thread as you thread your needles, which brings me to a needle if you need one. Um, you will also need a rat tail comb and a towel, okay? The rat tail comb can also be disinfected with barbicide. Your towel will go into your sort linens until it is time for them to be washed, okay? Your needle, the way that it's properly disposed of, will need to go in a biohazard sharks container, okay? Should be with the other biohazard container as well if you do have one, which it protects if you throw it away, no one will get punctured, all right? <clears throat> Your sharks container will have a biohazard sign on the outside and it actually will say sharks container. So some, these are some of the tools that you'll use to perform these methods, all right? So why do we disinfect our tools like duck bill clips, all purpose comb, rat tail comb. Why do we disinfect? Absolutely, class. <clears throat> to disinfect by getting rid of the germs, right? Why do we use barbicide? What does barbicide do? How does it disinfect? Jessica. It disinfects beyond, absolutely, beyond what the eye can see. Absolutely. All right. So, now that we have went over that, um, what do we use a needle in three and four, Aaron? For the braid and sewing method, absolutely. And if we wanted to use clips, like little clips, what is that used for? For linking, absolutely. What is another name for it, Tawana? Micro linking, absolutely. Absolutely. Okay, so we're going to go over the blood spill. In the event, all right, say you're doing the braid and sewing method that you might poke yourself, all right, because it's easy to do. You will want to stop service, explain the situation to your client. You will want to go to the area where your first aid kit is located, okay, and you will want to wash your hands with soap and water, all right, after which if you are bleeding, you will want to take a dry, a dry paper towel. Not the one that you just dried your hands with. You want to throw that away. You want to get a clean paper towel and apply pressure. And then once it has stopped bleeding, you want to throw that piece of paper towel away. Open your first aid kit. Take out your antiseptic cream and an antiseptic wipe. Okay? You want to wipe the wound with an antiseptic wipe. And you also want to apply antiseptic cream with a q-tip okay always be safe as immediately after you use that you will want to throw it away all right then you will want to put on gloves because now we're going to go sanitize and disinfect our station right so you want to throw everything away that is supposed to be disposed of in the trash and you want to disinfect your combs and wipe down your station with a EPA approved disinfectant, such as Lysol wipes or barbicide wipes to wipe down your station. Then you will take your items to the sink and disinfect them, okay? You will wash them first with warm soapy water, towel dry them, and then submerge them in barbicide. Tawana, what is our ratio for barbicide? You're correct, two ounces of barbicide to 32 ounces of water. You'll submerge it according to manufacturer instructions for timing purposes. Then you will take it out, rinse it under water, and towel dry. Place it in a clean implement box with a lid, okay? Then you will just go back to the sink, dispose of your gloves. You will want to wash your hands again with warm soapy water, towel dry, throw your towel away. And if your puncture wound is on your hand or your finger, you will want to use a finger guard or a glove to cover your wound and return to service. So, Aaron, could you tell me briefly what is the purpose in putting a glove on after you have performed a blood spill procedure? 
to protect your womb. Absolutely. And doing the blood spill procedure, why is it important to wipe down your station? Tawana. Absolutely. Is it, it is important to clean your station from any biohazard. Because why you touched your tools? Absolutely. How long, Jessica, do we submerge our tools in barbicide during the blood spill procedure? According to manufacturer instructions, which is 10 to 15 minutes. Absolutely. All right, class. So, make sure you go over your vocabulary words that are in your packet. All right? Make sure that you go over your quiz as well. Let's study your blood spill procedure and go over your consultation form. Okay? That's in your packet, in your incident form. Your incident form comes after the blood spill procedure. It's just a documentation documenting, you know, the uh, the situation that happened. So it'll be on file at the salon. You sign it and date it. The salon owner signs and date it, and they keep it in your file. So if anything was to come up or arise from your wound, you have a documentation on what happened so you can submit it to the proper authority. Make sure that you read over it. That incident report is important because, Aaron, you're absolutely correct. Because it, it documents the situation that happened, the reason why you had to do a blood spill. Okay, make sure that you read over it. Make sure you study everything. Make sure that you read the rest of the chapter on, chapter on hair additions. And come to class tomorrow with your tools and the method that you would use to add your hair additions for your demo. That concludes this section of the lecture.